Welcome to episode two of the Getting Ready for Summer series. So far in the garden, we've turned the grass by cutting, seeding and leveling the patches. Then we touched up the fence pane. Next thing to do is to clean the patio. But to clean the patio first, we're gonna to need to clear these sleepers. So in today's video, I'm gonna be making a new bench to replace this one on the top patio. I've got three sleepers to use. A reclaimed sleeper that I picked up for free and two live edge sleepers that I bought from a local timber merchant. I'm going to be making a simple sleeper bench out of the two new sleepers in a separate video and in this one I wanted to try out some power carving. For this bench the basic plan was to cut the reclaimed railway sleeper to length to make the bench top which I would then carve into a more interesting shape and then use some of the new sleepers to make the legs. As soon as I started cutting this sleeper, I was a bit surprised because I actually thought it was oak. It's extremely heavy and you can't see the wood through the dirt that's covering it. So I wasn't expecting this orange red sawdust when I started cutting. I still don't have a clue what sort of wood this is. So if you have any idea, I would love to know in the comments. With the wood cut, I was very intrigued to see what it would look like once I'd cleaned it up. I used a cheap wood carving disc on the angle grinder to start cleaning up and shaping the sleeper. This had been sitting in someone's garden for quite some time, sitting directly on the soil, so it had some rotten areas, which I tried to remove with the grinder. This started to give the sleeper a nice natural shape to it. The wood was still pretty wet, especially in the cracked areas, so I used a blowtorch to dry these areas and to try and kill anything that was grown inside. With the rough clean up and shaping done, I used a dental tool to try and remove any rotten parts or ingrained soil that remained. Realistically, I won't be able to fully stop the rot, but this wood is so solid in general that it's got many years left in it once I manage to salvage it. I soaked the wood in some vinegar, which would help kill any fungus growing inside the wood to at least try to contain any rot. You can see, just from wetting the wood, how much the red colour is starting to show, which means the finished result should be good. For the legs, I'm using some of the live edge sleepers, cut to around 40 centimetres. I cut these as deep as I could on the mitre saw and then finished the cuts with a hand saw. I could then place these on the other sleeper to decide where they're going to be mounted. To attach these legs, I'm going to use some M10 200mm socket driven coach screws. First, I drill a hole for the bolt head to sit into using a forstner bit, making sure that it's big enough to also fit in the socket head. I then drill a 10mm hole all the way through the sleeper. I can then position the legs and screw in the coach screws using a socket ratchet. With the legs on, I did some further shaping with the angle grinder to shape the sleeper how I wanted it. To further cover the rotting issues, I added a coat of this Ron Seal Wet Rot Wood Hardener, which I applied in a thick coat to allow it to soak deep into the wood.
When I first planned this project, I thought the legs and the top were going to be a similar colour. But now that I know this isn't going to be the case, I decided that I'd make the legs black by charring them. This should be a more complementary colour match and give it some nice contrast against the reds. This is also going to help it tie into the cladding on the garden room that it's going to sit against and it also acts as a further wood preserver. Because this bench is sitting in a specific place on Indian sandstone slabs, it's going to need some adjustable feet as the rivens in the slabs mean that the legs can't be flat. Adding these feet are also going to stop water ingress as the wood won't be in direct contact with wet slabs when it rains. So this should further extend the life of this bench. With the rot treatment all dry, I could move on to sanding, but not before I added some dowel pieces to hide the screw heads. I added plenty of glue into the holes and then I hammered the pieces of dowel into place before trimming them short using a pull saw. When the glue was dry, I could then sand these flush with the surface. After that, I started to sand the sleeper to give it a less carved look and more of a smooth driftwood kind of finish. I scorched the cracks to darken these to help them stand out further and then I sanded any char in from the wood surface. After a shocking amount of sanding, it was ready for finish. I used this external wood oil that I bought a while ago as it seemed like a good option to try. It brushes on white in thick coats to penetrate into the wood and then you buff off any excess to leave a matte finish. You can see that this brings out that lovely red colour in the wood. I use a small brush to brush any of the excess oil out of the cracks to make sure none of the white areas would be left. And this is how the final bench turned out. Nothing at all like how I expected when I started this project, but sometimes natural materials surprise you when you start working with them. I definitely wasn't upset with the final result. You can see here why I scorched the legs. It matches nicely with the charred finish on the cladding and it'll tie in even better when I re-scorch this to darken up the cladding. Thanks as always for watching. If you made it this far, I'd really appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Give this video a like and I'll see you in the next one.